Hello students, today we will discuss about the intraembryonic mesoderm. Now dear students, whenever you are having this word intraembryonic, you have to keep this thing in mind that there are two types of the mesoderm, one is intra, another is known as extraembryonic mesoderm. Now the important concept to understand that in which reference you are using the word extra and intra. Now the reference is your trilaminar germ disc, clear? Now when you will have the formation of bilaminar germ disc, what you will have? You will have a epiblast cell layer, you will have a hypoblast cell layer, above that you will have amniotic cavity, here is the yolk sac. Now this structure is surrounded by the trophoblastic cell layer. So this is your trophoblastic cell layer. Now in this area, there is a formation of extra embryonic mesoderm, clear? But when we are using the word intra, the intra embryonic means mesoderm which is going to develop in this trilaminar germ disc after the process of gastrulation, clear? So my dear students, please keep this thing in mind that whenever we are talking about the intraembryonic, we are talking about the definitive mesoderm and this definitive mesoderm is going to form your body parts like bones, like ribs, like vertebrae, skeletal muscles. But when we are talking about the extraembryonic mesoderm, this extraembryonic mesoderm is not having any adult derivative. This extraembryonic mesoderm develop outside the embryonic disc and here this extra embryonic mesoderm going to form your umbilical cord, your supporting tissues which are required for the nutrition of developing embryo, clear? So this is the basic concept, what is the difference between intra embryonic mesoderm and extra embryonic mesoderm, clear? Now when we are talking about intra embryonic mesoderm, the first thing come is what is the definition of intra embryonic mesoderm. So the intra embryonic mesoderm is a mesoderm which arises from the epiblast cells and these epiblast cells migrate through the primitive streak. So in my class of gastrulation, I already explained this that the epiblast cells are the long columnar cells and these long columnar cells start to migrate towards the primitive streak and then from the primitive streak region, they will detach and once they will detach, they will come into an area below the epiblast and here these cells are going to form a new germ layer which is known as mesoderm. So intraembryonic mesoderm arises from the epiblast cells which are migrating through the primitive streak and these cells are going to form your definitive mesoderm, clear? Now, this is the next question that there are few places into the embryonic disc where the intraembryonic mesoderm is absent and these are the three sites. One is precordal or procordal plate, second is the cloacal membrane and third is the notochord which extends from the primitive streak to the precordal plate. You know that precordal plate or procordal plate going to form your future oral cavity, the cloacal membrane is going to form your future anal canal and these are the area where you have the direct contact of ectoderm with the underlying endoderm. Now this is the most important question which generally you will have in the exam that what are the types or how will you classify or divide the intraembryonic mesoderm. So my dear students, the intraembryonic mesoderm divided into the three part paraaxial, intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. Now when you will see these diagrams, you have to understand that this blue color line is your ectoderm, this underlying is your endoderm and in this middle portion you will have the mesoderm. Now in the center first there is a formation of this notochord and once the notochord will form, it will create the changes into the adjacent layer of the intraembryonic mesoderm. Now under the influence of 
this notochord, what will happen? That this intraembryonic mesoderm is having the middlemost part is very thick and this thickest middlemost part is known as paraaxial. Para means parallel. Parallel to what? Midline, axial. So it is a area which is just parallel to the notochord is paraaxial mesoderm. Now if you will see this uh, diagram, what you are able to understand that this intraembryonic mesoderm is not uniform in the thickness. You are drawing this like in the shape. So what you are realizing that the innermost part is thick and the lateralmost part is thin. So this lateralmost thin part is known as lateral plate mesoderm. This thickest paraaxial part is known as paraaxial mesoderm and this middle portion is known as intermediate mesoderm. Clear? So when you are seeing the uh, formation of three layers in the germ disc, what you are able to understand that the middle layer that is your intraembryonic mesoderm is not uniform in the thickness. It is thickest near the midline and it is thinnest on the lateral side. Now later on you can see that in this lateral plate there is a formation of a intraembryonic coelom and this coelom is going to form your cavities in the adult body. Clear? So how will you divide the intraembryonic mesoderm? Intraembryonic mesoderm divided into the three part paraaxial, intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. Lateral plate mesoderm is the thinnest layer in all of three. Clear? Now first we will discuss about the paraaxial mesoderm. As the name itself suggests, where you will find this mesoderm, you will find this mesoderm on both the side of developing notochord that means it is parallel to the midline. Now this is the thickest portion of the intraembryonic mesoderm and it lies on both the side of the notochord. Now the another important thing is that notochord extends from your precordal plate to the primitive streak. So the paraaxial is also extends from the precordal plate to the primitive streak region. Now later on you have to keep one concept in mind that this paraaxial mesoderm undergoes the changes and condensation and segmentation will occur. Now under the process of condensation and segmentation, it is going to form a very special characteristic in the embryo which are known as somatomeres. Now these somatomeres later on divide and they will form the somites. And these somites is very useful structure because they appears like the surface elevation on both the side of midline in developing embryo. And these somites later on divide into the sclerotome, dermatome and myotome and with the help of these somites, this paraaxial mesoderm will form the vertebrae, ribs, skeletal muscles of the trunk, limbs and it is also going the muscles of head and neck and the dermis part of your skin. Clear? So first when you have the question on the intraembryonic mesoderm, you should have the idea that we are talking about the mesoderm which lies in the germ layer. Now this intraembryonic mesoderm arises from the epiblast cells which are migrating through the primitive streak. The intraembryonic mesoderm divided into the three part, paraaxial, intermediate and lateral plate. The paraaxial mesoderm is the thickest part of the mesoderm and this paraaxial mesoderm lies on both the side of notochord. It extends from the precordal plate to the primitive streak. This paraaxial mesoderm undergoes the condensation to form the somatomeres. These somatomeres will show the segmentation is known as somites and these somites are going to form vertebrae, ribs, muscles of your limbs, muscles of your trunk, head and neck and they are also responsible for the formation of dermis. Clear? Now the next mesoderm is intermediate mesoderm. Now dear students, this intermediate mesoderm is going to form your genitourinary system. That means it will give rise to your kidneys, your ovaries and testes. So this is purely and purely form the kidney and sexual organs. And this intermediate mesoderm is a mesoderm which lies between the your paraaxial and lateral plate mesoderm. So this middle portion of 
intraembryonic mesoderm is known as intermediate mesoderm. Now the next is lateral plate mesoderm. Now this lateral plate mesoderm is the most thinnest part and it is laterally placed and it is very thin. Now this intraembryonic mesoderm laterally extend with the extraembryonic mesoderm near the margins of your embryonic disc. Now here you can see that this is your extraembryonic mesoderm, this is intraembryonic mesoderm and here you can see that this intra and extra embryonic are continue with each other. Now the most important concept comes is that what is the features of lateral plate mesoderm. So my dear students, whenever you are having the embryonic disc, in this embryonic disc you know that anteriorly you will have the precordal plate, posteriorly you will have the primitive streak and in the middle portion this is your notochord. Now what is happening that in this area of your on sides you are having the three sets of the mesoderm. One I told you is your paraaxial mesoderm which is here. Then you will have this intermediate mesoderm and then here on most laterally we are talking about this lateral plate mesoderm. But my dear students, this is the area which is cranial to the precordal plate is also is having the mesoderm. Now this area which is anterior to precordal plate is known as pericardial bar. Now this area is known as pericardial bar and it is also a mesodermal area because we have seen that intraembryonic mesoderm is present in the whole plate between the ectoderm and endoderm except this precordal plate anteriorly. So this uh, mesoderm which is anterior to or cranial to the precordal plate is known as pericardial bar because this area in future going to form your cardiogenic area or heart tube. So the lateral margins of this bar continue with this lateral plate mesoderm. So what will happen? When you will have this diagram in your books, you will realize that this is your lateral plate mesoderm, this is your intermediate mesoderm and this is your paraaxial mesoderm. Now this lateral plate mesoderm continue with the pericardial bar which is present just cranial to the your precordal plate. So the mesoderm which lies cranial to the precordal plate is known as pericardial bar and the lateral plate mesoderm continue with the sides of this bar. Now what will happen in the next step that in this lateral plate mesoderm along with the pericardial bar there is a formation of a U shaped cavity. Now this is a formation of a U shaped cavity inside this mesoderm. Now here you can see that in this diagram also you can appreciate that this is the formation of the cavity here and this cavity is U shaped cavity, clear? So this U shaped cavity whenever form it divides the mesoderm into the two layer. What are these two layer? One is somatopleuric, another is splanchnopleuric but they are now known as intraembryonic mesoderm. So here in this diagram you can see that there is a formation of this cavity. Now this cavity is U-shaped cavity and this U-shaped cavity is known as intraembryonic coelom. Clear? Now what is the effect of the intraembryonic coelom? It divides the mesoderm into the two parts somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric. So my dear students, if you remember the extraembryonic mesoderm, the extraembryonic mesoderm also divided into the two parts somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm by the formation of chorionic cavity. And here it is intraembryonic coelom, clear? So you will have the somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm and earlier you read somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. Now you have seen that this somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm is a mesoderm which lies inside the cytotrophoblastic cell layer and this layer which covers outside the amniotic cavity. 
Now, somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm is a mesoderm which is related with the ectoderm layer. It is related with the ectoderm layer. So, this is the important thing that when you are reading the somatopleuric extraembryonic and somatopleuric intraembryonic, you have to keep this thing in mind that there is a one similarity. What similarity? That this amniotic cavity floor is formed by epiblast cells and these epiblast cells later on form the definitive ectoderm. So, whenever you are talking about the somatopleuric, somato means anything which is related to the body wall, that means we are talking about ectodermal layer. So, somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm related with ectoderm, somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm related with amniotic cavity and amniotic cavity floor is also formed by epiblast which is a future ectoderm. Clear? Now, in the same way, if you will see the splanchnopleuric. Now, splanchnopleuric is also of two types. One is extra embryonic mesoderm, another is splanchnopleuric intra embryonic mesoderm. Now, this splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm is present around the developing yolk sac while this intraembryonic mesoderm of splanchnopleuric layer related with the endoderm. And you know that the yolk sac is lined by the hypoblast cell layer and hypoblast is going to form or convert into the future endoderm. So, when we are talking about splanchnopleuric, splanchno is something which is pertaining to viscera and viscera is actually formed by the endoderm inner lining and the splanchnopleuric layer form the further coverings of the viscera like muscle layer. So, when we are talking about splanchnopleuric, you can remember that splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm is related with the endoderm and splanchnopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm related with the yolk sac and the yolk sac is also developed from the hypoblast and hypoblast is a future endoderm. So, in this way, you can keep this thing in mind that where you will find the splanchnopleuric and somatopleuric mesoderms. Now, in the next slide, we will have to keep this thing in mind that what is the future of intraembryonic coelom. So, intraembryonic coelom is going to form the three body cavities, pericardial, pleural and peritoneal cavities. Now, what is the fate of your somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm? So, Students, you have to keep this thing in mind that when we are talking about the soma, we are using the word for the body wall. So, what are the structures from the body wall? You can see that when you will have this body wall, innermost side you will have the parietal layer. So, the parietal layer of peritoneum, parietal layer of pleura, parietal layer of pericardium, all these parietal layers comes from your somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm. Apart from that, this somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm going to form dermis, bones of the body wall and it is also give rise to the muscles of the limbs. Now, which bones arises from the somatopleuric? It will give rise to the bones of pectoral region and pelvic region. Now, what is the future of splanchnopleuric? The splanchnopleuric is something which is related with the viscera. And you know that viscera is lined by the visceral layer. So, visceral layer of peritoneum, visceral layer of pleura, visceral layer of your surrounding heart is all develops from your splanchnopleuric mesoderm. So, splanchnopleuric is pertaining to the wall of viscera. So, it will give rise to the visceral layer of pericardial cavity, pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity. Plus, it is also going to form the musculature of the gut tube, respiratory tube and heart tube. Clear? Now, my dear students, I am not talking about the inner lining of gut. The concept is musculature of the gut. What is the meaning? That when you will see the gut tube, you know that gut tube is having the four layer. Innermost is known as mucosa. Then you will have submucosa. Then you will have muscle layer and outer layer is serosa. Now, here when we are talking about the wall of viscera, that means we are talking about the formation of 
all the connective tissue layers. Now, what are the connective tissue layers you will, you will have? Now, this mucosa is further made up of innermost epithelial lining, then you will have lamina propria, then you will have muscularis mucosa. So, except this inner lining of epithelium, now this epithelial lining is endodermal in origin. And this wall, that means the lamina propria, that means your muscularis mucosa, that means your muscularis interna, that means your circular muscle layer, that means the longitudinal muscle layer, that means the visceral peritoneum, all of them are coming from this part of mesoderm, that means splanchnopleuric mesoderm. So, inner lining arises from endoderm and the wall of the gut arises from the splanchnopleuric layer of mesoderm. So now my dear students, at the end of this session, you are having the basic idea, what is the intraembryonic mesoderm? What is the difference between the intra and extra embryonic mesoderm? The intra embryonic mesoderm is of three types, paraaxial, lateral plate and intermediate mesoderm. The lateral plate and your paraaxial mesoderm are going to form the bony components also, but your intermediate mesoderm is not having any bony component, it will give rise to your genitourinary system only. And at the end, you should have the idea that there is a formation of coelom inside the lateral plate and that coelom is definitive coelom which is going to form your pericardial cavity, your pleural cavity and your peritoneal cavity. So this is all for the lecture. Thank you.